Laura Issel from Put Your Heart Into It. Today I'm going to be doing a presentation on flat design and care. This presentation is in partnership with Knox Arts and Events as a part of the Stringy Bar Festival. I'm hoping that this will inspire people to bring more greenery into their life. I personally think this presentation is suited for people that are just stand, starting out with plant care, not necessarily someone who's already been interested in plants for many years. I'm not going to be going um, extremely deep into the botanical names or any part of plant design. But what I will do is give you a glimpse into my world which is filled with a lot of green and plant life on a daily basis. And I'm also going to be giving you a tour of not only my shop here on the Great Ocean Road, um, inside of Four Kings Coffee Shop, where we've had a pop-up shop selling plants and um, supporting local artists and makers for the last few months. But I'll also be going through lots of creative ideas, um, thinking about what sort of pots uh, might suit your plants, what sort of shapes of plants and varieties that are easy to look after. Now I'm just going to run through a bunch of tips and ideas that will hopefully inspire you. The first one is um, bringing greenery into your home in the way of leaves. As you can see over here, when I'm doing a bit of pruning, I tend to keep some of the larger tropical leaves just to put in vases. They look really nice around the home and some of them may even grow roots so you'll end up with another plant. Uh, I think it is undeniable that most people have killed a plant before and when I'm teaching workshops and having discussions with people about plants, something that comes up quite regularly is that, oh, I killed plants or I've killed a plant. Don't let that discourage you. I think um, enjoying plants and bringing plants into your life is a lifelong journey. There's so many different species out there and so much to learn that, of course, occasionally you're going to get it wrong because every plant does require different uh, uh, sunlight, it needs food, fertilizer, it needs water, air circulation, uh, and it, it really, the balance is about getting these elements right and finding a balance with those elements. But essentially every plant needs those four things. Five plants that are really easy to look after and quite popular. Um, the first one is a snake plant, which is just here. These are really great for drawing toxins out of the air require little watering and really sculptural and quite beautiful. The next one is ivy. It comes in many different varieties and is quite fast growing and also trailing and add a really beautiful design element to your space. The third one is a ficus, a fiddle leaf, which again has quite thick leaves, easy to care for. The next one is a palm. They come in many varieties, also easy to care for and love living inside. And the last one is a bird's nest fern. Which are actually an Australian native plant. So first up, I'm going to start by telling you all about rainforest terrariums. Um, some of you would know that they've been quite popular for many years now and may already know what they are. And for anyone else, uh, I'm gonna run through what's so wonderful about them. Um, sometimes they can be pronounced incorrectly. People call them terrariums, but it actually is a terrarium. And it's essentially a mini ecosystem that is inside of workshops shops on how to make rainforest terrariums for many years now and I absolutely love them. I think it's a great educational tool for kids to teach them about ecosystems and respecting the environment and it's really a fun activity to do with friends or uh, in your workplace 
um, to be able to bond and connect over the learning about how our ecosystems work. But then at the end of it, you've got this beautiful rainforest terrarium that you can keep on your dining table or give as a gift. So I'm just going to explain a little bit about how they work. I'm not going to go into too much detail, but have a look at this absolutely gorgeous one over here. So firstly, the first layer would be rocks in the bottom. And then next, there's a layer of charcoal that helps draw out the bacteria. Next is a layer of sphagnum moss that helps to keep moisture in the terrarium. And then a layer of soil, and then finally another layer of moss on tops, and then your perfectly chosen rainforest plants that lack a moist environment. There's many different types of terrariums, including desert terrariums that prefer a sandy soil and succulents, and they would have an open lid. There's lots of information out there about terrariums. Um, so I hope you have fun looking into that one. To assess your space so have a look at your home and take note of how much light is coming into your home so is your home more low light and not so bright or is there more light in your home and then choose the plants accordingly the second one is get to know your plants so whichever plants you decide to choose get to know them by doing a bit of research, googling the name of that plant, there's now many apps out there that you can take an image of your plant and it will bring up the information straight away. There's also many community groups to connect with online that will be more than happy to answer your of pot or vessel you're going to use for your plants. A really nice thing to think about is whether you would like to create contrast by using a darker colour with a lighter colour plant or choosing a colour of a pot that's actually similar to your plant. There's some really beautiful grey and blue coloured plants out there. You could choose a light blue or an aqua pot to go with it. Um, there's lots of ideas for different types of pots out there. The first one is thinking outside the box and thinking what there might be that's second hand. You could have a look in op shops and see if you could find vintage baskets or ceramic pots and you could drill your own holes into those. One thing that happened for me was once I ordered um, some glass teapots on eBay that turned up and turned out to be a miniature size instead of a large pot for an event. So instead of passing it on, I decided to turn it into a self-watering pot. And um, teapots are really great for that because they have the inside tea diffuser which you can put the soil in and then the water in the bottom and they'll water themselves as they go. Also self-watering pots are a really wonderful thing if you're quite a busy person, you go away quite a lot um, or you just tend to be working a lot and forget about your plants, it just gives you, gives you those extra few days for your plant to water itself. There's many options of self-watering pots out there. I highly suggest seeking out a small business and also now you'll find on the market there's many uh, pots made out of recycled materials which is really wonderful. Here you can see I have another option of pot which is a waterproof paper bag which is quite beautiful. You could also fashion your own out of uh, fabrics as well and also over here you'll see another clever idea which is a uh, lead bag that's been turned into a pot. Obviously you need to protect the material inside from water so you could place a plate or a dish inside but it gives a really beautiful effect and something a little bit more unique. Okay, here's some tips that are going to help you take care of your plants. So the first one is is inspect your plant and if you see that there's dust on your leaves grab a soft wet cloth and give them a wipe. Plants take in light and nutrients from their leaves so this can be really helpful in keeping it healthy. Okay. 
Another tip is to take off all the dead leaves off your plant. So what it will do is if you give it a clip, clip right down as low as you can go um, and it will send all the energy and the nutrients to the healthier leaves on the plant, giving it vitality. I'd love to give you some ideas about plant stands. I think it's really wonderful to be able to uh, create height in the home by lifting your plants up. And that also gives you a chance to look at that plant from a different angle and appreciate it from a new light. Uh, one of the first things that you could do is have a look around the home and see if you have any old coffee tables or stools that are, or chairs that are not being used and see if you could refashion those into your next plant stand. Uh, another Avoid placing your plant near an air conditioner or a heater. That's probably an obvious one, but they really will take a beating if they're having hot air or cool air being blown on them directly. Plants get used to the spot where they're placed in the home, so quit rearranging them. It's a big shock to their system, just like it is for us as humans when we get up and move out. So try and keep your plants in the same spot around the home so they can adjust to that light and what conditions they need, and that will allow you to assess your plant more easily. I think it's a really beautiful thing to bring plants into your life and to surround yourself with plants. I think nature brings us a sense of joy and calm. Plants are always changing, and I think we as humans are always changing as well. And to be able to have that connection and experience with plants can really help to slow us down as well. And appreciate all that the environment gives us. I love to think about um, plants using it in interior design and thinking about how we can use plants to create balance not only with heights and shapes, but also with colours around our space. And I find that my homes, every time I add just even three or four plants to one space, it changes the entire vibe of the room. And I think it's just like bringing a bunch of fresh flowers into a space. Having something alive um, with you to also help keep the air fresh really does make a difference. Um, the other way you can use plants as far as design goes and interior design and changing the look and feel in space is thinking about shape and thinking about height. Um, so you may look around your lounge room and have a blank space in a far corner. When you walk into a space, your eye will go straight to the focal point, which will be the biggest thing in the room or the brightest thing. So if you have a really tall plant in a far corner of the room, that's going to take your eye up towards the ceiling and carry your view around the space, which means that it's going to give an illusion that your lounge room or your space is a lot larger than what it actually is. Um, and it gives a feeling of grandeur. And if you have a look at this poem here, um, this is quite a tall palm. Another thing to avoid is a gnat infestation. Nobody wants to see bugs on their plant or to see their plant get sick. So when you're about to do some repotting with your new plant, open your bag of soil and leave it in the sun for a couple of days. That will really help to kill any bacteria. And the other thing is watering your plant from the bottom, so a watering dish rather from the top, allows the plant to take in water from the roots and it doesn't create a soggy environment where gnat infestations happen and love to live. The thousands of leaves plants have been used uh, in bringing different energies in to the home and also repelling uh, bad energy. So in Feng Shui, if you know anything about Feng Shui, if not, look it up, there's lots to learn there. But one of the key things is if you have any areas in your home that don't get used very often, like a spare room or an office or a corner in your hallway, it's a good idea to pick a plant that is quite um, sharp 
or quite sculptural, and that will cut through the dead energy in that space. And also, choosing plants that require less watering. If you're not using those spaces as much, then um, you're not likely to walk straight past that plant and forget to water it. If you have plants that require more watering, place those ones in either the bathroom or the kitchen. So that way they'll either be getting the mist or the dew from the air in the bathroom or you will see them and remember to water them. And for plants that require less, place them in a hallway or a space in your view for space. A uh, tip to keep your plants healthy is to aerate the soil. So grab a fork or a chopstick and uh, move that around really gently or even create holes with a chopstick to create air and oxygen to get to the roots of your plant. A really great way to display your plants is hanging plants within the home. A lot of people tend to hang plants out on their balconies or their porches. It's quite easy to add hanging plants in your home with a screw hook or a nail and can create height within uh, your bedroom, your bathroom or your lounge room. Um, you could hang them in clusters of three at all different heights um, or you could also create a macrame hanger or um, just use a standard hanging pot or there's lots of varieties out there. I tend to uh, try and support makers by looking for ceramic artists that are making pots at the moment. There's lots of incredible ceramic pots out there. Um, another type of hanging plant um, that I absolutely love is called a kokodama. I've been making these for about 10 years um, and I absolutely love them because it has One thing to think about is uh, how much light your plant needs. So um, a lot of people make the mistake of thinking that my plant needs lots of light so they place it right on a window. Um, be wary of that because our um, standards in windows within Australia are not double glazed, which means that the windows heat up and get really cold, creating frost or too much heat if the sun is beating on that window and that can either scorch the leaves or um, too much frost can um, put your plant into shock. So it's best to move your plant back and as long as it's in a space with lots of light, that's all it's going to need and it's um, general watering. But just be aware of placing it too close to the So I filled all my champagne glasses up with water and I went around with all the plants that I've got that needed to be pruned and clipped sections off and popped them into the water on my windowsill. Propagating can be lots of fun and also can be quite beautiful if displayed in the right way and there's really not that much to it. I don't have an example right here, but all those little cuttings that I put into the vases now all have roots and are ready to be planted into pots this week, which is exciting. And I'll also leave a photo to show you what that looks like and some extra tips in the comments at the end. The other thing is create a routine for yourself. Once you understand um, the species of plant that you've got, you've done a bit of research, you've asked around, there's lots of Facebook groups out there you could join, um, get in touch with me and ask any questions if you have any. But creating a routine can be really helpful. For example, if you know that your plant requires watering once a week, choose a day like a Wednesday for example, and you could name it Water Wednesday and pop it in your calendar on your phone or your written calendar to remind you. And that could be the day that you go around and check all your plants and be quite busy. If you're at home more often these days, which a lot of us are, uh, then you could have a daily routine where you thank your plants, but you may not want to kill them with too much love and overwatering. So it might be just on Sundays that you go around and actually water your plant, plant or give them a spray as well. Hi, 
Hi, welcome. This is my place on the Great Ocean Road and I wanted to give you a tour of my garden and some of my indoor plants. I've been renting for the last 20 years and I've never let that stop me with my passion for gardening. So I've always seeked approval to get plants into the ground uh, so I have more options with what plants I can actually have around my home. So first off, I'd just like to show you these hangers. I think it was a really clever way of reusing materials. This rope was used for a floristry installation for a wedding. And my friend Roz fashioned these into fantastic thick roped macrame hangers. And then down here, you'll see a native lily pilly, which is really good for uh, blocking out um, space and creating a hedge and this was actually a grey concrete pot but to match in with the hangers I've painted them white and added some black and this chair here was hanging around the house when I moved in it was all rusty and old so I've given that a spray of black to tie in with the pots and the hangers come through I absolutely love banksias I don't know about you but sculptural native flowers uh, float my boat here I've got a um, shrub form of the Banksia grandis, which I absolutely love and is perfect for a pot. So I look forward to that flowering in the next two years. Here I have a new lemon tree and also a vine that will be going in the ground out the back soon. So I'm pretty excited about having that abundance. And this one here I'm really loving at the moment, another upcycling idea is finding vintage baskets and turning that into a hanging pot. Come through to the back garden. So I would love to show you my ponytail plant here. I've had this one for about 25 years, it's still going strong. So that's travelled to about 10 different houses. This one here is a salvia. The bees absolutely love these. It's not flowering at the moment, but it does have a really vibrant purple colour. Here I have a lemon myrtle, which is another Australian native. And I absolutely love to pick the leaves off this one and dehydrate them and add them to sugar and salts or make a cup of tea straight off the bush. Oh, it's starting to rain. That's cool. Actually, yeah. And of course the compost bin over in the corner looking forward to getting a worm farm this week hopefully this garden bed inspires you to add a bit more color in your garden i absolutely love edible flowers i used to use them on all the grazing tables and for platters i like to pick them fresh every day and eat them straight off the plant yummy and i also share them with all the neighbors um so you can see here i also have a really beautiful uh green lemon sorrel has quite a tangy flavor really great for cooking and salads also some really yummy lettuce that's looking great there and some rocket and broccoli coming up which is exciting and some spring onion too and down here there's even more edible flowers these are absolutely going off as you can see i've been uh, getting some worm wee from the neighbours and adding that on as fertiliser. And as you can see in this row, I've got red, yellow and this vibrant pink in rainbow chard, which is a really great green that's really hardy. I've been adding that to smoothies and all my cooking. And the next row along is celery. And this has been growing for the last year and been really abundant. Been enjoying that. So I'm really looking forward to getting some more veggies in here. As you can see, I've got lots more space. I've actually got mint growing here, lots of lemon thyme, great herbs for cooking. Even some Thai basil over the end and some native ribbon, which is fun to cook with. Oh, look, there's some coriander that's just coming up. I only planted that a couple of weeks ago. got catnip this is for margot the cat she loves sniffing this one and rolling around in it and then just over the back here is nasturtium this puts off a really bright yellow red and orange flower but it's also edible absolutely delicious and you can also eat the seeds as uh, capers as well which is yummy actually 
this is one of my absolute favorites. It's an Australian native edible. It's the mountain pepperberry, which is originally from Tasmania. And I planted this one about eight months ago and it already has peppercorns. Absolutely delicious. A little bit peppery and a bit more spicy than a normal peppercorn. I've been adding lots of flowers in the garden. I really love black and dark purple and burgundy flowers. I think they're quite mysterious and really beautiful and add a nice pop of colour. These ones here are Hellebores. I absolutely love them. So beautiful. I also have some more thyme here, more edible flowers. And if we come along, you can see under cover here, I've started to create a bit of a fernery, create a bit of a tropical paradise since we won't be travelling anytime soon. So now I can pretend I'm on holidays. Absolutely loving my fernery. I'm thinking about putting some shade cloth above here and we're continually adding new plants. Lots of these have been gifted to me actually, but from adding wormweed and a bit of fertilizer, they've all really started to take off now in uh, less than a year. I'm really excited about this area here. I'm looking at putting in a permanent natural uh, building bench seat with clay and straw. I think it's a gorgeous area for seating around the campfire when we can have gatherings again soon. This will be the perfect spot for all my friends to sit around and enjoy looking up at the moon and listening to the ocean. I'm really excited about some of these plants because they've really taken off because this area gets the most sun in the garden. So I've got some Philly buttons over here, salt bush, some kangaroo paw, more lemon myrtle and also some banksies in the corner too. I'm sure you'll agree that this terracotta pot is really beautiful. I actually picked this up at the International Melbourne Flower and Garden Show that I love to go to every year to get inspiration. And this big old Indian door here, I absolutely love the finish on this. I found this on the side of the road, believe it or not. Popped it on the back of the trailer and here it is. It's moved with me to a few different homes. Come check out one of the bedrooms. So this plant here is a Chinese palm. It's been living in this room for about six months. There's a new leaf coming out now and I water this one probably once every two weeks. And I absolutely love it. And also I've got another palm in here as well. But what a difference it makes to the vibe of this room, actually. <laughs> Just because it's a small space doesn't mean you can't bring it to life. I absolutely love looking at hallways and little uh, nooks in the home. And if it has the right lighting, adding a little plant. This one here really does make a difference from where I walk out of the bathroom and the toilet. Thank you so much for coming on this journey with me. I hope you're feeling inspired to add a few extra plants into your life. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. I'd absolutely love to help. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the Stringy Bark Festival.